From Fremont, California, this is The Smoky Podcast, a production of The Smoke Signal covering everything from student life to what's happening in the world, all in short 20-minute episodes. I'm Mahak Bora, the web editor of The Smoke Signal, and I want to welcome you to our fifth episode of the second season, where two of our Smokies are going to be in conversation with two alumni from the class of 2019. This episode will focus on what it's like to transition into adulthood, go to college, and hopefully will serve as a resource to all the seniors during this college season. Hi, I'm Anvi. I'm a junior staff writer, and I'm also the tech manager at The Smoke Signal. Hi, I'm Pradeem Acharya. I'm a senior staff writer. Today, we have two special guests from the class of 2019 to talk with us about their post-high school experience. Hi, guys. I'm Vicky. Uh, I, was a, I was the opinion editor of The Smoke Signal for, the past, for two years until I graduated in 2019, and I'm currently a sophomore at Harvard. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Jonathan. I was web editor, and then I was editor-in-chief, uh, and I'm now a second year at Stanford. So I'll just start off. So what are the anticipation to become independent along with leaving Fremont and MSJ's culture make transitioning into college and adult life like? I think you were tossed in it no matter how, like what you wanted to do. I personally wasn't excited about the prospect of independence, but it's been nice. Um, ironically, maybe I've become more independent on my semester off because I'm on a gap semester right now this spring because I had to do my own taxes and cook my own food and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I was definitely really excited. I think I had a pretty representative experience at Mission of just staying in and studying all the time and not being able to go out with friends. And I always told myself when I went to college, once I was independent, quotes, unquote, like I would go out every night and, you know, go to parties and everything. And I think it was really funny that now that I think about it, I think that I left campus like two times during the two quarters when I was on campus. And like... I think I just realized, you know, becoming independent really, in a way, is not that much of a change. Like, I was still the same person, and I still had all of the same patterns that I had learned in a long time um, throughout my time in high school. So, uh, yeah, I I was pretty excited to be independent. And, um, and yeah, same as Vicky. I'm also on a gap quarter right now, and we're both kind of just, um, yeah, I, I've gotten a lot more independent as well. So is you guys, like, not leaving? I guess this might be only true for Jonathan, but, like, are you actively choosing not to leave your campus? Or is a sense of independence, like, are you not actually independent? Oh, I mean, I'm independent. I just, <laughs> I mean, being independent means you can make your own choices. And I just, I just made some very uh, classical choices of just staying in and out and just working all the time. I don't know, I think Vicky was honestly more outgoing than I was in college. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think like once you go to college, you have so much ownership over how you want to spend your time, like how much of you want to budget to studying and how much of it you want to like go out and make friends um, or party with people with. So I think that's like one thing that's like daunting about independence. And a lot of there is a bit of an adjustment in freshman fall um, to go through that process. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely an adjustment. And um, hopefully it's one that I can do better in when I'm finally returned to campus at the age of 20. A ripe old junior. Oh, Jesus. How do you plan on working on that, Jonathan? Like, what active <laughs> steps do you hope to... Yeah, um, well, I don't know. I think I'm even just going to start, like, because this quarter I'm re-enrolling. Um, I finished my internship, so I'm going to be going back to school for 10 weeks. Uh, for spring quarter before doing my summer internship and this is gonna sound like kind of weird but one of my goals is to spend less time like studying (laughs) like i i told you know like all my friends you know i really want to make it a goal of mine to not be such a sweaty little student this quarter (laughs) um and actually like try to make time for things that i'll enjoy and be kind to myself because i i've definitely been burned out like every quarter I basically, by finals week, I'm gone, you know? Like, I I spend way too much time being stressed out about school, and I think it'll ruin my life if I do poorly, and I think I just have a lot of those mental patterns that I'll work on getting rid of. I think a lot of it is also just, like, giving myself stuff to do that's not classes. Whether that's, you know, um, making a, an effort to go out with my friends more, or if it's joining orgs, like Vicky has said, um... Yeah, I, I think there are definitely a lot of actionable things I can do. And 
actionable. Action. Actionable. <laughs> I'll just do my best to show initiative in leaving campus. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys are like, like Jonathan, you're attending Stanford, which is close to home, and Vicky, obviously, it's Harvard, which is like across the country. So, I mean, Jonathan, is there anything like, what do you say is like an advantage of like staying relatively close to home? Like, how would you like evaluate that in terms of, um, you know, your whole experience? Well, I'm just going to say when we all got sent home to COVID, it was a much easier move for me than it was for Vicky. <laughs> like, like we, we just yeah stuff at school so it's oh fine. really oh yeah i guess you're going back so it's not that big a deal but yeah i mean i i just packed up my entire dorm room and, and headed home it, like it took me like an afternoon but um but yeah from seriously question um the weather is beautiful i know vicky probably is more adjusted to cold weather than i am but um i'll say it anyway it's nice to go to a place where the weather's nice um so that i think is a great advantage and you know like also just because we went to high school in California, a lot of our friends will also go to college in California. So going to school at Stanford, I remember like a lot of my friends came up um, just whenever they were in the area um, for competitions or local things. And it was nice to go to run into some of my high school friends just basically like by chance. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, I honestly, I think that it, it doesn't make that much of a difference there are definitely disadvantages too like it's much less out of my comfort zone um like i already probably would not feel as comfortable moving somewhere else um for a, a job or an internship um just because i feel like i've spent so much time in the bay now um so yeah maybe i would have grown more if i went to a different place but who can really say yeah it's so hard to tell uh, well, I, I think it is helpful to just experience, like, another area of the country for mm. um, a couple of years, but it's it's really up to you. And distance is really relative, especially with the internet. Like, I, I do wish I had that same sense of proximity with to my friends, though, when, like, when you mentioned that they would just come up on a weekend or something. Like, I definitely don't have that. Um, things have to be planned out, but yeah. Yeah, I guess for me, it's thinking about like maybe attending an out of state university. I'm like that long distance and like the different weather and that whole and change in environment does weigh on me. So I, it's just sort of something that I'm thinking about and sort of like having a hard time grappling with. And it's for me, it's like, like for me, at least when I'm picking the school, like the threshold for the out, out of state school would have to be so much more greater than my in, in state like school for me to actually go there because I feel so com comfortable just like yeah, being yeah. in California in this area. Yeah, I mean, th there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I mean, I, I think that th th I think, you know, this is not a very popular opinion, but there's nothing wrong with liking where you are and not wanting to force yourself to change or force yourself to become something else. Um, there's so much emphasis today, I think, on self-improvement but what about being content with yourself right what about being content with where you are and you know like Pradyum, i think that's a that's a great point you know if you know that you're comfortable here then why is that something that you would give up you know and of course you know th th this choice is different for everyone um so yeah yeah on the flip side like i think it's nice um to get out of the area again but also like you do get used to it like maybe you're homesick for the first one or two weeks but the thing is at college there's so much going on all the time like and you're so busy with your classes um and like yeah a lot of colleges have like tailgating um so you'll be you'll be occupied and then you'll sort of get used to the environment sooner or later um and i know this is like uh the experience of most freshmen that i've met um, over the past couple of years. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, I, I do have a lot of friends at, at Stanford who came from other states and said that they experienced a lot of culture shock. Like, close friends that I'd had from summer camp would come and say, man, this place is so different from, you know, where I grew up in Indiana. Um, and yeah, like, it was rough for a while, but then when they settled into their groove, they made their friends, like, they seemed pretty happy about it. Um, I don't know, one way I like to think about it is humans are really, like, we're made to get used to things right like um 
they've done like a study of people who they did like a parallel study of people who uh one set of people who had won the lottery and one set of people who had suffered a, a significant loss in the family recently um due to a freak accident and they they basically surveyed them like how happy do you think you will be in like one year uh compared to now and when they of course the people who won the lottery said you know i'll be so much happier the people who had lost somebody said i'll be so much worse and at the end of the year when they came back nobody like the the lottery winners weren't as happy as they thought they would be and the sad people weren't as sad as they thought they would be like humans are meant to kind of get used to things and i think if you force yourself into a new situation like that will also be true um you will get used to it eventually but it just, it is you know kind of a personal thing and the choice will be different for everyone and how have the people you've met kind of changed your perspective on things? Like, I think both of the schools you guys go to are super diverse, and people like to talk about the mission bubble and how we're all kind of the same. And so what have you learned that's changed your perspective on the world around you? Okay, first of all, I... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you could say that Stanford is a diverse place. I don't know if I would super agree with that it definitely leans much more wealthy and affluent than than the normal place does like i've run into a lot of people who are just rich and that has kind of changed my view of the world um it's just like a completely different way of of living like they worry about like very different things um but yeah i always kind of pushed back against the idea of the mission bubble like i understand what it is but I mean, life is just a succession of bubbles. And if you find a bubble that you like, you can just stay in it. And there's not there's nothing wrong with that. Um, Stanford is itself a bubble that a lot of people complain about, right? They say it's a very kind of tech techy place and um, or it's very kind of like academic. And these are all bubbles, right? I mean, you're going to be in bubbles your entire life, whether they're, you know, cities, regions, schools. And it is nice to experience more of them. Um, but the mission bubble is also a valuable place where I learned a lot of things, too. Yeah, I agree. I think, like, thinking about how mission has shaped me, it's just, like, it's so hard to put into words because I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even know who I would be without mission, like, for better or worse. I think it's definitely taught me a lot of things, as Jonathan said. Um, I could have gone without the sleepless nights, but, <laughs> I mean, it is... How it has made me who I am now, so it's not worth like thinking about like oh what could have been or whatever something like that. Um, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I agree with Jonathan on the bubble thing. On the bubble thing, um, I think yeah. People say Harvard is also a big bubble, and it's true. Um, and yeah, no matter where you go, there's always you're going to find yourself in communities and that like intrinsically creates a little insulated sphere. So, so how did you guys pick your interests or like majors to study in and like, did it ever sort of change when, while you were in college? Oh, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I came from a kind of varied background coming into college. I had a lot of, um, you know, I had done a lot of stuff in STEM and also in research, but I was also, you know, on the smoke school, I had some interest in writing and, and literature was AP Lit with my guy, Mr. Rath, was my favorite class in, in high school. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of different interests coming in, but I will say for like my first year, I just kind of assumed I was going to be a CS major um, for a number of reasons, right? The school has a good program. There was, you know, some amount of pressure from the family to pursue that because that's, you know, it's a safe and, and lucrative route. And also, I think at least at my school, it's just so easy to get sucked into that track because there are so many people doing it. Um, you can never feel alone as a CS major at Stanford because there's so many of them. And like everybody's doing the same things and it's, there's always something to talk about. Um, but yeah, as I went forward and I took more classes, you know, yeah, like my mom always told me, um, she always told me that I always really liked math when I was a kid and that I should continue to pursue it, definitely. And I think that was really great advice. Um, I had gotten a little burned out of math in, in high school due to some <laughs> unhappy competition experiences. <laughs> but um, I took a couple of math classes. I realized I really liked the subject. And um, 
it's kind of, you know, a throwback. Like when I was, you know, five, six years old, I really did love math. And I think I've started to kind of rediscover that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be a math major. And this is a decision that I made two weeks ago. So hot on the presses. Yeah, I had a very different experience with Jonathan um, because I entered knowing I had no idea what I wanted to do. Let's go. Um, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was pre-med. Um, I don't think I am now, but it could change. I think part of what I realized about college is, or like about life in general, I guess, um, is just that like we, we're so used to thinking in like four year chunks of time. But after you get like after you turn 18 the world just kind of opens up to you and then you just kind of find out about so many different things that you haven't experienced before and it's not like your fault or the fault of mission i mean it's just like in high school you don't really have as wide a world view as you would in college that's just how it is and you meet a lot more people um so yeah but major wise i think what helped me um, kind of approach this topic was just that it's it's just what a majority of your classes will be, but it's not your entire like college experience or even your academic like slate, right? Like you can always take a lot of different classes outside of your major. Obviously, depending on your major, the flexibility of your schedule will change. But um, but since I go to a liberal arts school, no, um, <laughs> famous <laughs> but, liberal arts school. Um, yeah, it, you you shouldn't feel beholden to a particular field of study if it doesn't, like, if, if you really don't think it's working out for you. And also because career hops later in life are pretty common, actually, um, as I've talked to a lot of alumni about this. And yeah, it's it's like, yeah, life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So what you decide for yourself now will not be the same as like what you'll be doing like a couple years down the line there's just no way to tell i mean it could be you know but but i i agree with the idea like it, there's not that much point guessing when you're 18 years old what you're gonna do when you're 25 I, like you should just you should just go where life takes you dog <laughs> i i think yeah letting go of the plans that's one thing or well don't like totally let go of the plans but Leaving some wiggle room is nice. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it? Is it hard to make that choice, like, or like to act on that choice? Like, it's one thing to make it, and your mindset's like, okay, yeah, I don't like the cur- like the major path I'm going. But isn't it a whole another thing to sort of act on it? Because, you know, I guess it's like it's 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 like another thing to do. So, did you find any difficulties like actually acting upon it, or is it quite open and shut? Um, it depends on what stage you are in your college career. I'd say. Um, yeah. I mean, if you have a lot of credits down, then you might as well just, like, complete it and then take more classes in the subject area you're interested in. Again, a major is just, like, a segment of your classes. It's not your entire college experience. So that's, it's definitely customizable. Yeah. One piece of advice, um, I tried to make the, my decision, um, like, just without making a four-year plan or, like, a course plan throughout college, and it was, like, so difficult. Once I just mapped out, like, here's what my course schedules are going to look like every quarter if I decide to be a math major or if I decide to be a CS major. I just said, you know, maybe I would prefer to take the math classes, um, at least for now. Um, so yeah. Like, just mapping out, like, the choices that you're really going to look at kind of clarifies a lot of decisions that looked harder before. Yeah. I also think, like, your major kind of matters yeah, less agreed. than... Yeah, yeah. Like, you think it will when you enter as a prefrosh because life is so fluid. I mean, honestly, like, in the end, it'll matter more that you graduated. Like, you got your degree. (laughs) Like, you're already going to be fine, honestly. Um, So, yeah. Yeah, honestly, don't don't sweat it too much. Just kind of roll with it and do whatever you feel is best. (laughs) Just vibe. And um, how has, like, the social life been at your colleges? Um, Do you guys go out much? What do you guys do when you're out with your friends? Or do you just stay inside your dorm all day? Which is fine. I mean, either way. (laughs) Oh, God. Okay. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah, I I didn't go out that much. But it was definitely not the fault of the school. The social life is very vibrant um, at my university. I just kind of stayed in a lot. 
Um, and that's one thing that I think people don't really... I think that's something that people get a misconception about college is that you'll be kind of... It'll be a super social thing all the time and there won't be that much downtime. I mean, no, there can definitely be downtime if you want. Like, I definitely had periods of time where I just stayed in my room. Um, you know, didn't really feel like talking to anyone. And that was fine. Like, I, w- I was given my peace. Um, there's also been times when I went out and I went to parties and stuff. And that was also fun. I mean, you can do a, a lot of stuff. And I think this is the case at a lot of schools. Um, there are a variety of yeah. things you can do socially. You can go to parties. You can... Um, I mean, depending on the school, you can play board clubs. games. Um, <laughs> you can do orgs, yeah, and um, you can just hang out uh, with your friends in the dorm, and like eat meals together, which is actually, which is honestly like like eating eating meals in the dining hall was honestly like how I made a lot of my friends, you know. Um, yeah, actually. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, like there's just so many social scenes, and surely there will be some that match for you. Yeah. I agree. I went out more than Jonathan did, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Still not much because I was studying a lot. But um, yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can make friends. And the social scene, I think, is there at any college. Some, it might be like a little diminished, I guess. Um, But like it's there if you want to find it and it's it again goes down to the choices you make with your independence yeah so you start saying it's more like it's not like you go to college and automatically it'll happen it's sort of a conscious decisions you have to make in your lifestyle to like approach yeah definitely well i mean you can kind of get swept up in the tide of things sometimes like when people spontaneously decide to get like a late night snack or something you might just be like okay i'm tired i'll go too but like to make it a habit or to make it a recurring thing like it definitely requires conscious effort and like with the people you've seen around you and what you've learned from them um how has that shaped like your worldview or the lessons you've learned i mean it's been everything um the people around me are the ones who who made me who i am like i don't know like i i've learned so much from my friends and and my family and the people I've been around. Um, and yeah, I, I say it a lot, but I am incredibly grateful for all the people who I've had the fortune to meet. Um, I, I really do wish, you know, in, in high school, I had spent more time um, with my friends. I wish in college, I had spent more time with my friends and, and with the people around me. Um, yeah, especially now that we're all, you know, home from college. Um, I think I... I I just think I wish I had spent more time on people and less time on my grades and those numbers. Um, yeah. Yeah. In the end, you don't even remember your grades. Or I guess you do, kind of. But, like, you don't really remember the stuff in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. Or you might, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, you don't need to but hedge yeah, so, like, much. Yeah, yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when you think about college, it's definitely just the times you spent with friends. Oh, yeah. Like, when you tell stories about college, right, it's always, like, funny stuff that went down or the people you've met. Um, Yeah, I've met a lot of really interesting people and had a lot of really interesting conversations. I think it's one, like, nice thing about just being in a space with a bunch of young people your own age. You just, yeah, yeah, get to develop organically, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so like how should seniors like me you know who've gotten college acceptances obviously some of them are still rolling in but like how what advice would he give for us like how to like deciding where to attend and whatnot yeah i'm just gonna say um if you have like more like a lot of questions about this you can feel free to email me or jonathan i think jonathan yeah, is also I'm free whenever um yeah yeah my email is my name at stanford.edu <laughs> let's go yeah my name my name okay we can do this later <laughs> but yeah um the about choosing colleges i think in the end it matters less than you think it does at any college you'll find your space you'll find your people um and it's such a cliche but like every college has its ups and downs mm. so like to compare two colleges side by side is really like comparing apples and oranges definitely you want to make your decision based on like what you care about at the time like 
okay, the academics or I don't know, the social scene or like the sports or whatever. But um, my priorities also changed throughout college. So it's really like up in the air. Yeah, I, I think Vicky hit it right on the head. I mean, the idea that I think about a lot is, you know, I sweat. I sweated so much over the choice of where to go to college. And yeah. in the end, like, I really think I would have been the same person. Um, like, that's one thing to realize. Like, people think, um, or I, I definitely thought that if I went to school A, I'd be a different person than if I went to school B. I mean, that is just not true, right? I thought I'd be happier if I went to one school. I thought I'd be smarter if I went to the other school, you know, and so on. And But in the end, like, I am who I'm going to be. Like, there's only one version of me that can exist. And... Like, it's just those choices that I make for myself, less than the school that I went to. I mean, I think that people make these choices based on prestige sometimes, or, like, or how, how good their ego will feel if they go to a certain school, and, like, that's nice and all, but it honestly, like, it, it really is the person, and, and not the school in the end. The, I honestly think, and we can talk, and of course, you know, we can talk about this anytime, I think the college application process is broken. Um, I don't think it does a great job of selecting the kinds of people it wants to and avoiding the kind of people it wants to avoid. Um, and so I don't think that the college you go to should be treated as, as such a massive part of your identity as we kind of make it out to be. Yeah, I agree. I actually, okay, I actually do think like the college I would have gone to would have made me a different person just in terms of my worldview, but like... Um, that's just me it's like also how influenced you are by your environment but again like that different person that I would have become would just doesn't exist because yeah. I didn't make that choice so it's not worth like sweating over like that hypothetical you know just make a choice and then like if you're running out of time obviously like you gotta make a choice <laughs> and then uh, just stick with it and don't look back and you're gonna have a good time either way well you'll have good times and bad times but yeah. like you know. We understand. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Vicky said something um, earlier uh, that I thought was really cool, which is basically that, you know, if you find yourself having done your due diligence on doing your research on a couple schools and you still think it's a hard choice, most likely, like, no matter what choice you make, you'll be fine. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. The most difficult choices are usually the least important Absolutely. ones. Yeah. This is what a professor yeah. told me. Yeah. yeah. Smart because the fact that they're difficult is that like either option is good. Yeah. If there any, are there any closing things you guys want to add? Um, you know, to anything you said, like elaborate on any of your previous responses, or just you know, end with words of advice, I guess. Uh, I think in the end, living is about learning to be fulfilled and happy. And being a good person and making a good impact on other people. <laughs> and it sounds weird as a 19-year-old to be saying this. But yeah, I think um, from Mission, I did get a sense of like, a sense of like a lot of things were competitions. And that's just not how life works. So yeah. And this is just like stuff you kind of pick up on in like your first semester of freshman year. But yeah, be a pleasant person. <laughs> It's harder than it That's sounds. That's my hot take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, on my end, I, I definitely agree. I, I think that... I still look back at my time in high school um, for all of the, you know, pain and the stress and, and, and the sleepless nights. Like, I still think I had a lot of beautiful experiences during that time that I still hold on to. Um, working with friends on projects, you know, um, you know, just staying up talking to people and getting to know them. I, I miss Mission a lot more than I thought I would. Um, it really was such a special place um, in more ways than one. But yeah. The people were yeah. special. Yeah, the people were special, yeah. actually. Yeah. I should, I should yeah. be more clear on that. Yeah. yeah, we both got closer to um, certain people that we didn't talk to too much over quarantine, actually. Shout out to UFO Nico. UFO, Hat. Nico, Hat. 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 Gamers Rise Up. Yeah. Gamers but yeah. <laughs> I definitely think that my value system changed. Um, like Vicky said, from wanting to be the best, from wanting to be the greatest, to... Wanting to be happy, wanting to be kind to the people around me, wanting to be a good influence, wanting to support my friends when they needed someone. Um, 
it is a cliche to say you want to have a good impact on the world, but it's kind of underrated how many ways there are to do that. I mean, so many people are, I mean, I even thought that the way to make a good impact on the world was to, you know, I have to start a company, I have to, you know, make lots of money, and then that will be how I influence the world. I mean, no. Making the world a better place can be as easy as being a shoulder to cry on. It can be as easy as being there when somebody needs you. And that was something that I think I've grown to appreciate a lot more. And yeah, in general, um, I can we can attach our contact info, hopefully. Um, I was once a wayward youth, like some of you are, and uh, I would love to chat anytime um, about, you know, college, life, anything. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I think we've learned a lot about your guys' lives today and how you changed in college. And so that's all for our episode with Jonathan and Vicky. And we hope that this was helpful for seniors that are deciding which colleges to go to or like sophomores and juniors that are deciding which colleges to apply to. And we'd like to thank you guys, of course, for taking the time and um, giving us your advice about these things. And we really appreciate it. Hey, no problem, dog. Yeah, anytime. (laughs) I had a great time. Yeah, uh, yeah. any underclassmen listening to this, you should all join. You should apply for the Smoke Signal whenever it opens next year. Such a great organization to be in, as you can tell. Yeah, most of my closest high school friends are from oh, the yeah. Smoke Signal. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. For more content by the Smoke Signal, visit our website at www.thesmokesignal.org. To our listeners, thank you for taking time out of your day and tuning into this episode of the Smokey Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. I'd like to thank Vicky and Jonathan for taking time out of their schedules to come back and talk to us about their experiences, as well as Anbi and Pradyam for guiding the discussion. I hope this episode is helpful to anyone who listens to it, regardless of whether or not you're a senior in high school ready to take the next step of your life. Lastly, this past year has been hard, so I'd like to congratulate all of the seniors for putting in their best efforts for college applications. For those of you who've gotten into college, congratulations. You deserve all the success you've worked hard towards. But for those of us who've had to deal with unfavorable decisions from colleges on top of everything else, it's anything but easy. Take time to take a break and rest. I like to remind myself that it's all temporary and that what I do with the opportunities presented to me is truly what defines me as a person rather than the name of the school that I'll go to for the next four odd years. As someone who's seen everyone in the class of 2021 grow for the past four years, I know that there are so many change makers, artists, scientists, lawyers, writers, doctors, athletes, engineers, entrepreneurs, and a lot more incredible people in the making. The background music is produced by Lou Crumbo and the show is edited by me, Mahek Bora. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Smokey Podcast and we'll see you guys next time.